Hey there everyone, welcome to Negative Entropy. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a more detailed look at the James Webb Space Telescope. Work began on the successor to the Hubble Telescope in 1996 on what was then called the Next Generation Space Telescope. In 2002, it was officially renamed after James E. Webb, the second administrator of NASA who held that position from 1961 to 1968. He was also the person who oversaw both the Mercury and Gemini missions. Now, the James Webb has had a bit of a rough road, undergoing some major redesign changes in 2005 and having its launch date pushed back multiple times throughout the years, mainly due to complications during testing phases. It's currently slated to launch in March of 2021. Now, the James Webb is being developed in conjunction with both the European and Canadian space agencies. The six and a half ton telescope will use the European Space Agency's Ariane 5 rocket and lift off from a site in French Guiana. Utilizing a site so close to the equator is actually beneficial as the Earth's rotation will lend some of that speed to the rocket's trajectory as it attempts to leave Earth orbit. Unlike Hubble, which orbits the Earth at about 550 kilometers, the James Webb will orbit at about 1.5 million kilometers at a point known as the Sun-Earth Lagrange Point 2. To put that into perspective, the Moon orbits the Earth at about 385,000 kilometers. A Lagrange point is a region around any two orbiting bodies where the combined gravitational forces essentially cancel out, allowing a third, smaller object to maintain a stable orbit with little to no adjustments necessary. Essentially, it'll be orbiting the Sun in sync with the Earth and the Moon. Now, James Webb won't reside at the L2 point, but will instead circle L2 every six months in a halo orbit. In order to maintain this orbit, it will have to carry a fuel supply, and this is the main reason for the expected 5-10 to 10 year lifespan of the James Webb Telescope. Unlike Hubble, which is close enough to be serviced by the Space Shuttle, James Webb will be too far away for any maintenance or resupply missions. At the conclusion of its run, the telescope will be redirected away from L2 and into a true solar orbit. A few other satellites that have taken advantage of the L2 point are NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP, the ESA's Planck Space Observatory, and the Herschel Space Telescope. Now, the two main differences between Hubble and the James Webb Telescope are its size and the spectrum of light it will utilize. And I'll break each of those down as I cover the parts of the James Webb individually. The most prominent feature is the optical telescope element, or OTE. This is a set of mirrors used to collect light for the telescope. The primary mirror is made up of 18 beryllium reflector panels coated in gold. With a diameter of 6.5 meters, this provides a collection surface of about 270 square feet, compared with Hubble's 48 square feet. Next is the sun shield. Coming in at 22 meters by 12 meters, it's roughly the size of a tennis court. It's made of five polyamide film layers, coated on one side with aluminum and silicon on the other. Its job is to block heat from the sun in order to help maintain an operating temperature of less than 50 degrees Kelvin. And in order to fit into the cargo hold of the Ariane 5 rocket, the sun shield will fold 12 times. The third section is the Integrated Science Instrument Module, or ISIM. This area is what houses all the cameras and sensors. These include a near-infrared camera and spectrograph, a mid-infrared instrument, a fine guidance sensor, and a near-infrared imager. Now, I mentioned earlier that the James Webb will operate at less than 50 degrees Kelvin, and that is specifically because it's looking in the infrared. Infrared falls in between visible light and microwaves on the electromagnetic spectrum. And on Earth, we feel it mostly as heat. So if the telescope gets too warm, that can interfere with the images collected. Something akin to too much static on your car radio. One of the benefits to using infrared is that it allows us to see through clouds of gas and dust that can scatter and reflect visible light. The final component is the spacecraft bus. The bus is located on the bottom of the telescope and is the primary support component. It also houses the equipment for computing, communications, and propulsion. Once the James Webb is launched, it'll be about six months before it's fully operational. That time includes a roughly 30-day trip to reach the L2 point, unfolding and cooling the telescope, as well as a series of system checks to ensure that everything is functioning properly. Now, the base of operations here on the ground and for the duration of the lifespan of the James Webb 
will be the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, Maryland. I don't know about you, but personally, I am very excited for the James Webb. I always love when NASA sends up a new telescope because inevitably we learn amazing things about the universe around us. So once again, thank you for watching. This is Negative Entropy. If you enjoyed this video, please do remember to like and subscribe. Drop a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.